Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, in theory, I drive, well, I come, usually come to Chicago every year, actually. What friends there, we didn't come this year because of pandemic, but it's probably be there next year, hopefully. And your lash, what are you doing? I haven't stopped today. Traded the European morning, traded with my inner circle this afternoon, and then just spent an hour and a half with a new member of the inner circle, uh, getting all these charts and everything set up so it's uh, it mirrors mine on all these different screens. So <clears throat> now the webinar. So it's been a long day, but a long weekend ahead, which is good. Yes, I will do. Hola, Federico. Que tal? Mi amigo. Yes, very new. So today is just about Elliott Wave. Okay, so I'll, each week <clears throat> I do, I mean, Elliott Wave. Next week is Bits. The week after is Roller Coaster. And then on the last Thursday of the month, I try to combine all three in the, in the trilogy. So um, so we, if we try and stick to subject, um, so because it, there's a lot of new users of the Elliott Wave, I just want to go over some basics again. And when you're trading any strategy, it doesn't matter whether it's the fifth wave, uh, you need to repeat the same things all the time. And I will, in the boot camps, you've seen it. Um, you know, if you, if you take one of my uh, courses live, uh, I talk about keeping it sim simple and repeatable. And that is what, it, what needs to happen. Okay. Everything is simple. I have the same things. Um, I don't know whether you can see the screen, the big monitor behind me here. Um, uh, let me know if you can see it, but I have my support and resistance zones on everything I do. Okay, I have my uh, channels, I've got my indicator suites, I've got my alerts, and everything's the same no matter what, what I do, where I do it. Um, so, you know, these, this is uh, platinum at the moment, so they're they're in orange, those, because they're still being tested, but they look, they're pretty good. So it's all about making sure that you've got uh, that simple and repeatable strategy, whether you're using one of the indicators or all three. Uh, the, the thing is to make sure uh, that you're doing the same thing all the time and you're not changing the rules. The rules are there for a reason, okay? Uh, and if you stick to the rules, you will get a good win rate. If you don't stick to the rules or start to cherry pick, I can guarantee Sod's Law is you'll cherry pick the wrong ones. Okay, so this is a stock called SGEN. I looked for a long beginning of this week uh, on the 60 minute time frame for a fifth wave move. It's not worked out. You know, this is a break even type of trade because I'm going to close it today purely because uh, we have the holiday weekend coming up. Um, and um, I don't want to carry a swing trade on the six minute time frame over the weekend. I only carry ones that are on a daily time frame, for example, for stocks. So I just want to go through the setup for this really to understand how I, you know, went through the setup process. The first thing you'll remember is the way four pulls back into one of our support zones, green, amber, red, green, 85% probability is going to go on and hit that fifth wave target zone, okay? Amber 80, red is 75. The next thing we look at is the 535 pullback between 90 and 140. What you see on my screen now is just in trial. It tries to automatically measure it, but at this moment in time, it's not working perfectly. But right now, for this case, it does measure, and it comes between 90 and 140. The next thing is during the wave three, we've had the false breakout bars printed on the stochastic. That denotes a really strong bullish trend. 
So what happens is when it pulls back on the stochastic on the wave four and crosses in the oversold zone, it's like an elastic band, that false breakout bar. The stochastic wants to return to that overbought zone. And it did do when it took us in this trade. But then we've had some really, really crazy markets this week. And it came back down. We've got higher support levels, though. And then today it's gone back to uh, gone, gone back through the entry. Because it's that 60 minute time frame to stock, we've got a uh, bank, you know, a holiday tomorrow and the weekend. I'm just, just gonna take it off. Uh, but the main thing is uh, the next thing I want to talk about is entry. So this is Monday. Do my uh, do my work on a Sunday, and I see this is a good potential trade, but my entry's got to be above this high. Why? Because it tried to come away from this support level here and it failed and it came down to make a new low. Okay. So my entry's got to be above here. So it was 169.21. My stop loss is just below the wave for pivot. Now, this is quite an expensive stock. So you need to be about, you know, 10 to 16 um, cents below that wave for on your stop. Um, if, it, if it's a cheap stock, you only need to be one or two cents away. So you've just got to gauge that uh, the way it is. Um, so I measured the risk to reward. So when we're using the risk, the, uh, the FIB extension tool, we click once, we click three times on a, um, on a FIB extension tool. First click is on the stop. The second click is on the entry price. The third click, just move the entry price along the same um, thing and click the third time. And that gives you the risk to reward, 50%, 100%, 160%. So risk 100 to win 160, okay? One to 1.6 into the target zone. Very, very important. You can do all this setup. You've got to make sure you've got the sensible entry strategy before you do the risk to reward. If the risk to reward is below one to 1.6, that's, that's the last tick in the box. If that isn't the case, you don't get it. Simple as that, okay? So you can do all this work, everything looks great. It just, if the risk reward isn't there, you just don't go in. What I'm gonna do now is just go to the daily time frame. And Massey, and so is Massey a wave four? It is the fifth wave, yeah, okay. So this is just another example of a trade that I'm in, but this is on the daily time frame now. Okay. So this is on the daily time frame. It's sort of way for pullback. Fantastic for pullback, really. Uh, 5.35 is good. Check. Stochastic, false breakout during the wave three. Pullback, crossed over in the oversold zone. Check. Perfect. Pulls back into the green zone. 85% probability. Where's my entry going to be? it's going to be above this pivot here, okay? Uh, because we had the wave four posted here, and then we entered into this trade here. One of the things, when you trade the fifth wave move, and I'm going to zoom in here, is you don't panic. You let things run to the stop, okay? Uh, just for Elliott Wave, Frederico, um, when you're using bits, you can go be one to one or roller coaster one to one, something like that. But um, with uh, with Elliott Wave, it's best to have that one to one point six because you got you need a good run at it. Okay, so this triggered here on the 22nd of June. Okay, it pulled back. It came very close to stop. It didn't take it out. Got a slightly higher support level. It's now back in profit. One of the things it's very difficult, and I, I keep saying this to my inner circle, you've got to let things run to the stop because the stop is below a major support zone in this case because we're going long. Don't start panicking and start thinking, oh, I'll save myself a few dollars and take the trade off. Because in this case, and this is a prime example, 80% of the time, if it comes back down against you, it doesn't take the stop out and then goes back in profit, okay? So exactly the same sort of thing again. Go through the checklist, but once you're in the trade, don't panic. You put a stop loss there below a support level if you're going long, above a resistance level, which is the way for um, if you're going short. You are prepared to lose money at that stop loss. Don't lose money before it because you've got to let things run to the stop because a lot of the time it won't take the stop out and it'll go back up. 
If it takes a stop out, that's where you're prepared to take the loss, okay? So every trade you go into, that's where I'm prepared to take the loss. This is what I'm gonna risk. You know, if I risk, a, you know, $10,000 here, I could win $25,000 in, in there, okay? But I'm prepared to lose $10,000 in that trade, okay? And that's the mentality you should be going with there. Um, another one. Right, we don't plot subwaves because you don't trade subwaves. We trade the fifth wave. We don't need subwaves in there. We need multiple time frame analysis. Okay, so um, one of the things I teach in uh, in my weekend course uh, when I do it live um, is multiple time frame analysis. Um, you're not missing out on anything if you don't have the subwaves because all it does is confuse people. Most Elioticians, because they like to call themselves that, like to look clever. Okay, so they will give you all of this bull crap about inner waves, inner inner waves, the eyes, the I eyes, the IIVs in brackets, and all that sort of stuff. It's absolutely bull crap. If you want a high probability trading strategy, you just trade the fifth wave. Simple as that. But you can trade the fifth wave on smaller time frames as well. So if you're really, really intimate with the stock, for example, um, you could be in this fifth wave move. And I, on WPM, I'm in this fifth wave move. I'm at 50%. So I've risked 20 grand here. I'm at 10 grand profit. Okay, $10,000 profit. Now, at some stage, this pulled back. Okay, so when it pulled back, I could look at a smaller time frame, like I don't know, a 30 minute time frame, okay, or a 60 minute time frame. And I can see if there's a wave four pullback on that particular thing. So what I want to do is I want to go to these lows here and I want to isolate at this lows. This is the current trend. Was there trading opportunities, the so-called inner waves, on a smaller time frame? Isolate at the lows, which is 81. So I'm isolating at the lows. Okay. Yeah, there was a potential fifth wave move after that pullback there. Okay. It wasn't very pretty, but it was there. If I probably went down to the 30 minute, uh, it would probably look a little better if I could isolate it at the same from 30 minute. I need to go back more days. Okay. So you see here, 30 minute, okay, we had a pullback yesterday on a wave four. Stochastic, good. 535, good. Opens up, you know, yesterday, down, support on the wave four, comes back up, go long through the six four moving average high, hits the fifth wave target today, okay? Who needs inner waves when you've got a multiple time frame strategy and you just trade the fifth wave. Remember, keep it simple. You don't, I've got a degree in mathematics and engineering. I don't need them to trade. I keep it simple. I've got some pullback zones. I've got an oscillator. I've got a stochastic. I need to understand the behavior, okay? So when I'm on a daily time frame, I know that overall on that large time frame, we are in a bullish trend, okay? When I'm in a bullish trend and I'm in a fifth wave move on here, can I add to the position? Let's look at those pullbacks. What happens on those pullbacks? On a smaller time frame, it could be a wave four and you could trade the fifth wave and add some more or trade it on a different trading account. Or if you're trading long physical stocks on this, for example, you could go options on a shorter time frame or vice versa. There's lots of different things. I mean, WPM, yeah. Um, so, you know, you've got to keep it simple. Um, one thing, the understanding behavior is very, very important, okay? And Elliott Waves allows you to measure that behavior and trade that fifth wave move. Why is it, why, you know, people ask me, why do you only trade the fifth? Because all the rules have been met for waves one, two, and three. 
More importantly, the observation and the rules for, and the behavior of that waveform fallback have been met. The likelihood is it's going to go on and make that fifth wave move. Now, it can do that on different time frames. So during this fifth wave move on WPN, if I go down to all the time frames and, and track those pullbacks, I can actually add or trade uh, a different type of security with this particular stock. I could keep trading this for months, okay, using those uh, different time frames but I'm keeping it simple. Now, why don't you trade the third wave? Because at the time when a third wave starts, you don't know it's a third wave. 60% of fifth wave moves continue, they blow through that fifth wave target, and then when they become longer than that original third wave, the software redesignates it's a third wave. That's how you get the third wave. You're getting the high probability fifth wave move, it just keeps going, turns into a third wave and it's a winner when a chicken dinner. Really big move, okay? Okay, let's just look at two stocks. I'm not here to look at stocks for everybody. I'm here to look at any way. So we'll just look at these very quickly, okay? So here I can see we're, we're, we're actually, in, we've broken the wave four zone, we've pulled back. So I need to look on a smaller time frame here. I need to see what that pullback looks like on a smaller time frame when I isolate uh, that wave four. So let's go to the 60 minute, and that's 30. I'll put it to 60 again. One hour. Okay. Mm. That looks pretty good for a short, but I wouldn't, uh, again, holidays tomorrow. So on a 60 minute time frame, we could be going short. If this was beginning of the week, I'd be really interested in this short here. Stop loss just above the way four. Entry probably below this low. Maybe no, I'd go a, bit, a little bit more aggressive here. Um, just below this low here. That's two days lows. One to one point six. Five thirty-five is good. Stochastic's good. Entry sensible. I think even with a more conservative entry, I'd be around about one to 1.5. So that looks pretty good. But again, we've got the holidays now, so I'm not really interested in that one right now. Uh, if we go to the 240, I isolated these lows here, 214. Two forty is a good time frame trading stocks, by the way. Uh, it's gone too deep. We did have, see. Look, we did have a four, uh, a wave four pullback on the two forty, and a fifth wave target hit. So there was a good trading opportunity over the last um, month or so on the two forty to trade the fifth wave on win. But right now on the daily, it looks a bit um, suspect. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see what happens. But again, smaller time frames for win. Um, and then I'm okay. Last one. Okay, so daily first. Ooh, that's ugly. That's not trending. Okay. I don't like stocks that aren't trending. Stay away, got earnings coming up as well, end of this month. That ain't trending. It ain't trending, it ain't trading. Okay, so let's go. Uh, a lot of you trade futures rather than stocks. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the amount of candles after the fourth wave, you're right, it, it's not, that's not the criteria. The criteria is look for the entry strategy. So when I'm looking at SGEN, for example, on the 60 minute, which I'm in now, and it's not really made any money this time. Um, so I'm not looking for the fourth, after the fourth wave pullback, I'm looking for good support. I'm looking for a move away but I'm looking for a sensible entry above a, a recent pivot point or a shoulder on the third wave. It could be anything. 
okay? I hope that answers your question. It's not the amount of candles after the fourth wave, it's understanding that support has been found. It's starting to move away from that support. Now you're looking for that entry point, a good entry point. One of the things we look at as a first instance is the six four moving average high for a long, which is the green moving average, or a six four moving average low for a fifth wave short. Then we need to consider a recent rejection or a pivot point. In this case, our entry was way above the six four moving average high because we had this pivot point, okay? Okay, Venus, SPX. Uh, no real direction at the moment, but uh, you know, on the hourly, that's why you plonker, rat boot. Okay, let's just take these off a second. So with SPX or SPY, Ooh, platinum's heading up, Mr. Trey on the roller coaster there. You guys costing me money. Okay, so with SPX, um, one of the things you need to look at for longer term is go to the weekly, 10 year, okay? You can see here, um, this is the current trend. Um, now, we've had a wave four pullback. We've gone the fifth wave and now we've gone corrective. So uh, one of the things where you're looking at with, with Elliott wave is, uh, was that wave four low broken? It was, but it found support in or around there. So when you're framing your charts, and I do a lot of this in my courses, is you are looking at that as a support level right now. So then when you go down to daily, okay, you can understand what's going on. Okay, as long as that support level. So that's just isolate from these lows at that support level here. 434 on my chart, so I'm going to go 434. Four, three, four. Okay, so this is where we are on the daily time frame. So um, I've gone from the weekly, I understand where a big support level is. We've pulled back against there. Nice roller coaster short there. Whoa! Okay. Um, now we've pulled back up. Uh, one of the things uh, to look at now is the current trend. Uh, again, in my courses, I talk about uh, putting channels on there as well, so you can understand uh, where we are in the channel. So daily channel on SPX is really, really crucial here. Uh, I'm going to go for those lows as a center point of the channel. Again, I'm not going to start teaching that here, but I'm going to be looking at... There, okay. So I'm looking at the channel, I'm looking at the behavior within the channel, and now I can go down to smaller time frames on SPX and I can understand how to trade that on a fifth wave move. For example, on the, on the, on the um, this fourth wave was pretty good on the, on the four hour here, fifth wave target blown through. Okay, we've gone pretty corrective right now because we're going into the holiday weekend. Uh, and you see on the 60 minute how we're behaving within this channel. Okay, uh, we've got a nice double bottom here. Uh, I'll go through this quickly. It, this, this is a, a weekend course. Uh, so you're going to be looking at that sort of support zone here coinciding with the bottom of that channel. Uh, double bottom here, technical. Uh, so moving into next week, I'd be looking at this on the intraday time frame as that as a start point of potential trend. Uh, maybe coming up here, testing the center line, coming back on the wave four and trading the fifth wave move. Okay. So really, really uh, lots going off there. Um, silver SI, okay. And when I'm trading futures, not too bothered about on the daily. I'm more interested in what's going on in the 60 minutes. So I'll bring that over first. 90 days on the 60 minute. I'll look back. 
and I'll see if we're in a trend. We're in sort of a trend. I might just go 240 here a second. See if I can see uh, the channel a little clearer. Yes, okay. I'm just going to take that off. And then I'm going to draw the channel on here on the 240. Perfect. Go to the one hour. Okay. We've got a massive pullback yesterday. Found support at the bottom end of the channel. We are not really trending at the moment. I think we need to get back above this support and resistance zone. Yeah. Okay, so I've taken in the top of this bat here, this pivot point. We've hit the pivot point on the low of that uh, again there, on the high of that pivot point here, and we've been clustering around there uh, today really. Um, so, you know, there's no real trend there at the moment. Overall, longer term, the rule, we're looking for bulls. Uh, I would say silver looks very good on the roller coaster. Um, I can't see a losing trade on the roller coaster for a long time. Uh, really good on the 240. It's in the groove, if you like, uh, on the 240. But we're out of that groove right now. Okay. Uh, so we're not trending. And then we need to go down to the smaller time frame. So we know really the overall trend is bullish. We've put the channel in there. And we are looking, uh, you know, there is a pullback today on the five minutes. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Um, remember, we, we isolated these lows earlier, just freaky, it's the same. Uh, 1562, we were pretty close. Where's my Elliott wave? One five six one. Markets turn at the same point, guys. Okay. So that's where we are on the wave count right now on silver. Now, this is an ugly, this is clustering here. One of the things I cover in my course is when you get this clustering up around a wave three and then a wave four pullback, when you are looking for a risk reward, I mean, the 535 is good, but this is going to struggle to push, push through this cluster because you didn't have a nice profit taking pullback it clustered around this then pulled back. So if you're going to enter long, your stop would be below the wave four. You probably go long around about 18.309, but you, you've got a good risk to reward to the fifth wave target zone. But this clustering makes it a lower probability trade. Look how deep it went here. Now, if I now put that range in here this cluster range okay it's there or thereabouts the bottom of the range is where our entry is going to be so potentially we could trade to the top of that range of the cluster range and get a one-to-one -one or a one-to-one point three or something like that but it's not fantastic when you get this clustering around the way three, you don't get a nice pullback and then a move, you stay away. I don't understand, Dennis, what you want. Uh, through, through trade station. Oh, right, okay. Um, email me at or email Damien at info uh, at trade com, and what he will do is you'll send you the link uh, and he will send you a coupon code. Uh, to lease it for the year for trade station uh, for Elliott Wave 
okay? It's $499 a year. Um, but I didn't tell this to anybody, but there is a coupon code. It's called because you asked coupon code for 10%. You've got to email Damien for that coupon code though, okay? Uh, it's, it's a BYA something or other. It's because you asked coupon code. Um, so you've, you've attended the webinar today, so you might be able to get that. Does that make sense? Um, on the uh, on silver when it's clustering. Okay, so what I just want to show you guys is um, I'm not a narcissist, but I do have my own website now um, because it's 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 all about uh, about it's all about me. Okay. Uh, no, but there's, there's a bit about me, about my inner circle, which is full by now, by the way, by now, there's no, there's no rooms, just a waitlist. Um, some of the publications, some of the events that I'm doing, uh, it's got my course on there that I usually deliver live over a weekend for $1,500 uh, in um, live in the USA. Uh, so all those sessions for a whole weekend have been recorded. And it's there for sale for $397. So if you want to really learn how to trade Elliott Way bits and roller coaster, the this is the course to take. Okay. It is everything. Trading the behavior. I will put the link in there. Now, what I'm going to do with this is like a live course. So twice a year, I'm going to be doing other sessions that I'll record and I'll be used recent current examples of everything that I've talked about in there. So multiple time frame strategy, uh, Elliott wave strategy, uh, blend investing, you know, you name it, it's all in there. Uh, growth stocks, ETFs, uh, roller coaster, you know, all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm going to be adding to that each year. So it's, it's current. Okay. There's nothing wrong with learning. So guys, I've been talking for half an hour. I need you to ask me some questions if you've got any more, because this is your time. This is for you to ask me questions on Elliott Wave. Are you having problems with isolation? Have you got an example you want me to go through? Um, you know, this is your time uh, to ask those questions. Watch list. What watch list? The watch list I've got is on this screen over here is just for um, um, for futures. Yeah, roller coaster is great for futures, but honestly, we traded a fifth wave move in the 5K club the other day on a two minute, uh, a fifth wave move for a 6B. We'd already been in it on a roller coaster. It pulled back on a wave four, took the trading stop out, and we traded the fifth wave move. Uh, and that's day trading. That's a fifth wave move on a two minute. So it, it really is good for day trading. For day trading, I would, it's difficult because all three indicators are for different market conditions. But if I had to pick two, it would be Elliott Wave and Roller Coaster. Okay. I do like the bits because we get some great signals on bits. Um, but if I could only pick two. So my futures watch list is uh, not available for anybody because it identifies harmonic patterns, okay? Bats, crabs, all sorts at the moment, butterfly, that sort of thing. It identifies on different time frames um, harmonic patterns, okay? That that's not available at the moment. 
the pink means it's going, it's for a short, the green means it's for a long trailer. So isolation, isolation. Now, those that ask me about isolation, have you got an example, something you struggled with? Is it, is it a futures contract, a stock? Give me an example so I can give you that. Help you with that. Maybe I look at uh, thirty minutes on a stock. Okay, if you go in long silver, it's at your entry price now. Okay, what's gold? Gold's going long. Okay, stock. We have a smart list for roller coaster as well, Edith. The smart list for roller coaster actually gives you the win rate as well. So on this time, on the two minute time frame, get a signal for 6B, for example, it's got a 92% win rate. And this is updated every single trade or signal that comes through, okay? So there's a smart list for bits for futures and there's a smart list for roller coaster for futures and for stocks for each one, okay? There isn't one for Elliott Wave. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're getting a win rate of 86%, which is on average, and you get a signal, you go, yeah, you just got to work out your support resistance zones, that's all. Um, so, let's have a look at the 30 minutes here. Let me the, load the Elliott Wave up, I haven't got it on here. So, Elliott Wave. Didn't need to isolate there, but uh, this is MU on the 30 minute. Okay, now, let me just go back 30 days. Okay, now, isolation is pretty basic. You're looking for the recent highs and lows. But before you do any isolation, you've got to frame your chart. Look for recent support and resistance zones. And I can see one right here, right now, okay? Boom, 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 triple bottom, okay? Came off this, three, four, five, hit. Come back down, roller coaster down, hit the bottom, came back up again, back down, high support level, Boom, up, gapped up this time, formed a wave three. So when I'm looking at this, and I haven't got any Elliott waves on there, I've got to look at this low here and this low here. Then I've got the start of a trend, and it pulls back against that trend. So I'm going to isolate at these lows. So then I will look on an oscillator, which I haven't got on here at the moment. So let's put that on. Uh, I don't have them on there. So, so I will look at these lows, slightly higher support level, okay? You can start here, it will just give a correction. Um, so we can start at this one, which is a 326. So I'll go 326. Okay, so I've isolated down here. It shows the correction because it comes back down and breaks the alleyway wave rules, but then it starts to print the one, the two, the three, the four. If this was a Monday or Tuesday, I've got a 535 squad, I know the stochastic squad, I've seen it on the other chart. I'm gonna look for a stop below the wave four. I'm gonna look for an entry above the high of today. 
5078. And I've got a whoops. I've got a great risk reward on MU on the 30 minute. Okay. Depending on where this finishes today, I might look at that on Monday. You look, Trevor, every time you ask me this, the version 3.1 is not available because it's not working properly. Okay. 3.1 is just the oscillator. Uh, I'm going to put stochastic on here now as well then. The false breakouts denote a really strong trend. So if the false breakout on the top, you're only going to trade long if you have a wave for pullback against that false breakout. The more false breakouts you get, the stronger the trend. And when it pulls back against there in the oversold zone, if it's in the overbought, it's a good probability it's going to want to go back there, Rusty. Okay. So, um, stochastic. Now. So in this case, we've got a bit of a roller coaster ride going on. <laughs> look at that roller coaster short, look at that roller coaster long. So we've got here false breakouts, got false breakouts at the top, got false breakouts at the bottom. We've got a false breakout at the bottom here. We don't take the fifth trade move because there's a bias now to the downside. Okay. You see how deep this has come back here. We're going from we're going from false breakout oversold, overbought, oversold. It could go back to there, but there's less light. If you if you're looking for a fifth wave move long and you've got the false breakout starting on the bottom, you don't go long. Simple as that. Yeah, you would start at the bottom of the trend. Uh, that's where your start bar would be. So. I've got to pick a futures contract now. Silver Trade is about $150 in profit now. Anybody take that one? It's $30 odd dollars per tick. Got a roller coaster forming on the five minute as well. Anybody take the silver long? $32.50 per tick. It's not for the faint hearted. It's going pretty good right now. Okay. Can I find a futures contract where I can show the other way? I thought of it uh, oil a second. So you're in the USA. This is the um, Globex open. We're on a nice trend. It pulls back. I get up around about this time in European time, seven o'clock. Okay, I see it continue to go higher. European opens at nine o'clock. This is obviously the start of the trend. Would you agree? Yeah. So when I wake up, I look at that low, 50, go to here, I put 50 here, okay. So even if I'm in the USA, when I wake up, it's obvious where that trend started, okay, for the day if I'm trading futures. It started down the bottom, okay. So we are out of way three, out of way four. And around about this time, so just midday European time, would have gone long on oil. 
at around about 40.13 and it hit 40.63, 50 ticks, not a lot of money, but it's okay. Um, now, that trend is over because we've broken the wave four pivot. We've had a one, we've had a two. We haven't got a fourth wave move at the moment. On the, uh, you know, there's no trend right now on oil. So the thing to do if you're trading futures is get up in the morning, look for the highs or lows, look for the trend, it's obvious, and basically isolate at those lows or those highs where that trend started overnight. And this is why I don't use D charts because the contracts basically a 24 hour contract and a lot of trends start during the Asian or the European session. So you need to have the full Globex chart on so you can identify the start of that trend and that's where you isolate each day. Okay, that's what I do. Does that make sense on isolation there? Okay. Let's see what's over me good today. Mm, nada. Uh, natural gas. Nice little trade of natural gas this morning. very corrective just lately now one of the things you do want to look at as well is um, we've had these lows and these were overnight lows okay this was uh, I traded this short down here on a bits okay this big move made $190 in like uh, 50 seconds or something, I don't know, a minute or two. It wasn't long. Uh, but these are the lows. So I want to isolate here, 705. Oh, if you don't believe me, because I don't tell lies, like $190 natural gas. Yeah. Okay, that's where it is there. I traded that short. So click apply, click OK. OK, so quite corrective in here. Ugly looking uh, pullback. Now, a wave four traditionally takes seven to ten candles. OK, seven to ten candles. It can take a little longer. Now, remember, one of the things that we look at on a wave four pullback is the 535. This wave four pullback came down here. The 535 was not right. Okay, no trade. At the end, it did make a little bit of money, came back to test the wave three. Now it's come back down again. So now this is where this thing isn't working. You see this version, it's not carried that through. Okay, what you're looking for is zero, highest point on the wave three. Now we've come back. We've got a wave four here. Okay, it's not made quite, it's made a higher support level, but the, the, the 535 now is between 90 and 140. Okay, this is crucial. So this is a three minute time frame on natural gas. Now, there is a trade here, not on the, um, not on the three minute, okay? purely because our entry would, in theory, have to be very aggressively outside the six for moving average high. So we can look at that. But remember, the ultimate low is here. I do like this for a long because we have a higher support level here. So aggressively, an aggressive entry, 1721. It ain't bad, 1 to 1.6, but look where the rejection was, okay? Or rejections in that zone there. So that's about a 1 to 0.9. We did have a rejection here. We've not had it anywhere else. So, you know, it's a one-off. But I don't like that on the three-minute. 
So I've used the Elliott wave to say, right, I wouldn't have traded that, but now it's come back, it's come to test the wave three, it's come back down again, but I've got a higher support zone here um, on there. But now the 535 met my criteria. What does the stochastic look like? Stochastic did cross over here in the oversold zone. It's not done it this time. Have I got another, this is where it comes to trading the trilogy. What I've been looking for right now is a bit signal. I understand the potential of this fifth wave is good because we've had a wave four, we've gone back up again, we've come back down, but we've got a higher support level. So there's a bullish bias to this move, yeah? This fifth wave move most likely will hit that target. But I can't, I really, the entry strategy for the fifth wave isn't really working for me on this time frame or any time frame because of this big bump in the road okay so what i need to look for is on a smaller time frame or a different time frame is a bit signal remember bits uh is a breakout strategy that relies and gives you the signal on increased volume okay um so i need a bit signal to show me if it's a long that there's more volume to the upside that it's actually going to take off if I don't get that, you know, I really don't have a trade. Uh, I could, I could trade it. Okay. The only, the only issue is I have to be risk free pretty damn quick. Okay. Because I don't have the volume to give me the bits. As far as Elliott Wave's concerned, no rules have been broken. I've got a higher support level there. Everything looks pretty good. I just haven't got a great risk reward. So, you know, the reason not to go in it, there's a lot of them, but if you did, you would have to adjust your stop to break even after say five ticks. You've got to be really quick on this one. Um, you know, unless I get a bit signal on a one minute, a two minutes, something like that, or even the three or the five, most likely won't go long on this one um, because there's a lot, uh, there's, a, there's a lot working against me. Uh, and we've also got the point of control here as well, so that's not very good. Mm, what was that ding ding? Short. So we've got YM short signals coming through. So if you want to go long natural gas, it's at the entry price right now. Okay. 1721. Let's just go back to silver a minute. See how that one we're going. Not everything's pretty, guys. Okay. Silver is doing pretty good. Who asked me about silver? Are you in this trade? This is a good profit right now, and I could be risk free. The thing is, with this move, I'm one, two, three, four, five candles into this. I can go risk free, and, you know, below the low of the fifth candle back. I always start at the zero point. Okay. So on this one, for example, here. I use a fib retracement. I click on zero. I take it up to the highest point of the oscillator during the wave three. I click again. And then all you need to do is adjust the defaults to 9140. As you can see here, it came back between 9140. Okay, natural gas is in, one ticking profit. Woo! This can move very slow, then all of a sudden, boom. Okay, either way.
Okay, guys. Uh, quick question, isolation. Is there an algo in the way software that tries to continue isolate on new highs and lows? What it does is follows the rules and the certain percentages and things like that that's all worked into it. So um, it will follow the rules one, two, three, four, five. If any of those are broken, it starts to either give it a, an ABC correction or the start of a new trend. So this is why sometimes people just start at the start at zero and just let it count and do its thing. So any rules are broken, it starts to recount. When certain uh, percentages moves and everything like that is done, uh, it starts to re redo the count and it, as long as it sticks to the rules. So it does automatically re do the recount, if you like, okay? Okay, guys, I think that's it. Uh, just been about an hour now. I'm going to have some dinner and a beer. They're not in the, no, they're, <laughs> so in the stochastic, these are the bias. This is the bias indicator for, um, for the bits. So what I do is I actually, if I just, that's what they look like separately. That's your false breakout stochastic. But with think or swim, it's pretty cool. If you drag the bias from the, um, from the bits uh, indicator suite into there, into the same box, it puts it into the stochastic, which is pretty cool. Saving space. You're welcome, Edith. Jurat, Jurat, you're welcome. Buenas noches, Frederico. Thank you. It has been recorded, guys. It will go up sometime tomorrow. I'm playing golf first thing in the morning, so I uh, so don't trade Friday. So it will probably be later on in the day. Um, I'm, I'm uh, playing golf tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I was down here trading, so my wife took the picture this morning. We had about five ducks in our pool this morning. We Opposite us, we have a lake, the fountain and everything in the urbanization. And we have ducks nesting there. And then the next urbanization in the countryside is about a you know, half kilometer away. They have another lake. And we're in the flight path of the ducks. So occasionally they just come and land in our pool. Just take your time, Edith. Um, you need to, uh, just to, to pay for trade, just get used to it, understand the rules of behavior. I did put a link into there to my course. That is, you know, I'm not a salesman, but that is a whole weekend's course and to really understand how to trade uh, and, you know, trade the behavior. That is a great course. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend and I'll speak to you all next Thursday, most likely.